appreciate you guys uh, hanging on throughout the uh, full three days, those that you stayed all three days. So um, it's been a, a long process to get to this point. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank my leadership group, Brandon Brown, Tim McDonald, Dennis Hickey, uh, Chris Rossetti, Ryan Cowden, um, along with all the coaches. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of hard work that goes into this. You know, they're sent on, you know, out to pro days and Zooms with the prospects. And, you know, Dave's is nice enough to give them a week off in late March. And unfortunately, sometimes there's pro days during that time. And these coaches have to give up vacation with their family for, um, you know, to, to go visit with these draft prospects and help us, you know, in our, our process to make the decisions and, and draft these kids. So hats off to the personnel staff, the coaching staff, um, everybody in this building that um, is part of the process. So there's a lot that goes into it. And, um, you know, I, I like where we ended up this weekend. You know, now, now that it's all said and done and we still have free agency and they're up there working on that now. But, um, you know, I just uh, I feel like we're in a good spot after the draft. Any questions? No, obviously the roster isn't finalized, but just now that you are through the draft and the, obviously the bulk of free agency, like how do you feel about where this roster stands going into you know, year three for you guys? Yeah, I think where we are right now, um, coming into the offseason between what we did in free agency, um, you know, the draft today, uh, the, the trade for Brian Burns, um, you know, again, we, we always have room to grow and always have room to improve in. I say it all the time in here, we, we, we don't play until September. So there's still a time between now and September where we can acquire other players, the final cut down, uh, whatever it may be. So I like the group that we have right now. Um, I'm excited to get the rookies in here, assimilate them into our culture, get on the grass, practice. And then as we observe and evaluate the players as we're going through it, if we still have needs, um, you know, there will probably be some vets that will be released over the next couple of uh, weeks as well. So there's always going to be a, a, pl a time and a place where you can pounce on some more players. But we'll see where we are right now. And as we go through the competition period and during training camp, if, if there's other areas we need to fill, we'll try to do that. Joe, was, was tight end um, more of a priority because you don't know what's going to happen with Darren? Yeah, we had to take that into account for sure. But, um, you know, Theo was the top player on our board. Again, um, I'm trying to think if, if there were any of these guys that we took that weren't the top player on the board at the time. Um, we we went by the board. He's a guy that last night when we left, he was sticking out for us. And, um, you know, you're always thinking when you come in the next morning, he's going to go soon or he may not be there. And uh, we were excited to get Theo. You obviously did not take a quarterback in this draft. You did a lot of work before the draft has been reported. You tried to move up or at least had conversations about moving up for a quarterback in this draft. Where do you consider yourself with the quarterback position now for this year and for the future? Yeah, for me, I said it in January after the season that you know expectation was Daniel would be our starter, and we brought Drew Locke in to be his backup, and Tommy's been the backup, so that's where that's where we are, and I mean that's where we're going to move forward this season. Daniel's still on contract for three more years, um, so as it sits today, that's where it, that's where we are. Joe, while you were doing all of that work and going to places like Washington, LSU, North Carolina, um, was the design during that time to try to make sure you were coming out of this draft with a young developmental quarterback? Or did you view it as due diligence that wasn't necessarily going to come to fruition? Yeah, and I, th you know, I understand your question. If you look at the pro days we went to, I mean, there's – quality and quantity you know you look at LSU there's a lot of good players at at other positions that we did take uh, no different than Washington Washington won a lot of games and went to the national championship game and there there were a lot of players so um I guess I should throw in the like the Drake May and JJ uh private workouts as well into the and what's workouts. the question in regards to the private workouts? no just into the into all the work you did I mean I should have mentioned those with yeah and I, there, there's um I can name 15 other players that we did private workouts at other positions. So, again, we're going to continue to do our due diligence. You know, you get six, seven swings, and you want to make sure you know as much as you, you can about each prospect. Um, and I think being around these kids on their campus, boots on the ground, dinner, uh, setting up pro days, you know, whatever it may be, I think you could find a lot out about the prospects. So it's not just quarterbacks that we did private workouts with. Um, we're always going to do our due diligence across the board. I think the due diligence on quarterbacks, just based on where you're picking, 
led to some maybe doubt about your faith in Daniel. Obviously, you signed the big deal last year. So many people maybe would take that as you're looking to move off him. So do you like recommit to him or anything? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've said it before. It's not just it's not just right now. I mean, Dave's and I went through this in 2017, and we've got an intimate knowledge of of that class. Whether it was Lamar Jackson, Sam Darnold. Baker Mayfield, Mason Root. I mean, you can go through it. And we know those guys. We have a very good feel. Last year's draft, we spent time with C.J. Stroud. We spent time with Will Levis. Like, now now we know what these kids are about. If they ever become free agents or they're they're on the trade market, I just, I just think it's a different position when you're evaluating it. You can watch all the film you want, but there's reasons at that, that position guys succeed and they fail, and it's not just because of the tape. So... That's always good. I mean, the three years we've been here, we've done a lot of work on the quarterbacks. Maybe it hasn't been as public. It hasn't been um, as well covered. But we'll always do that just because the importance of the position and what goes into it. You can't just throw the tape on and say, OK, I'll sign that guy. There's a, there's a personal makeup. There's the way you carry yourself, leadership, uh, processing information. It's not easy. This guy calls a play in some of these meetings and says, regurgitate it to me. And then you got to go call out the mic and then you got to change the play. You got to shift this guy. Oh, by the way, you got to snap the ball and you got to figure out where you're throwing it to. That's not easy. So I think spending time with this position is very, very important. Again, whether it's today or down the road or in the future. Dave, have you spoken directly to Daniel to maybe share with him some of what Joe just said or to? Ask him if he has questions. You know, have you spent ever? Have you done anything out of the norm because of this situation with Daniel? No, I, I think. Look, this is. I've, I've I talked to the entire team, but I meet with the quarterbacks daily. Um, I spend a lot of time with them every day. Yeah, every now. Yeah, even now. Um, so, you know, you're just transparent with the entire team about the the whole draft process. Um, you're trying to improve your team. You know, the last meeting we had, I showed a. I showed a picture up here of, of all of our area scouts, um, Joe, his leadership group that he mentioned. And, you know, part of their role is to help improve our football team by creating competition. And then there's a human element, too. You know, if you're sitting in there and you're in a receiver room and we draft Malik neighbors, there's a human element to that, too. So I think you have to be transparent. Um, there's a draft every year. There's free agency every year. You know, we, we start out the meeting by, you know, any new players that are here that weren't here last year stand up. Uh, any guys that were drafted by, by Joe and our staff stand up. You know, there's, it's, it's different every year. The teams are different. It's constructed different. But I think, I think that open lines of communication, whether it's with DJ, whether it's with Tommy, whether it's with the receivers, the D linemen, linebackers, running backs, uh, you know, I encourage all of our coaches to do that because I think that's important to be transparent and, you know, whether it's, Again, free agency, draft, there's constant turnover. Uh, but so the communication lines are, are definitely very important. Joe, Joe. last night, we when, well, actually, the first night we were talking about neighbors, the idea was presented to you the idea that you were giving Daniel a weapon. And it seemed like he, you know, it was almost like, oh, it's, it's a weapon for the offense, mm -hmm. whoever the quarterback is. Is there a sense where? You're now trying to build what you want from your offense and what you want from your defense. It's not necessarily a specific player, but it's also kind of what you believe now you want to have as far as what you're going to do offensively. Yeah, and I think. Well, I think you yeah, want generators. generators. Yeah, people that can do stuff with the ball in their hand, whether that's take a jet sweep and go 30 yards or whether that's you know, run a double move and catch it 50 yards down the field to, to help you score points. Um, and, you know, just to go back to Malik, I feel that, that he is that. Uh, now he's got a lot of work to do. You know, there's a big playbook to learn, and you got to try to slow it down for, for these young players when they get in. Um, but, you know, anyone that can touch the ball, and, and you know, linemen are, are, can be generators too, you know, in a different way, by keeping the pocket clean, by getting movement at the line of scrimmage. So I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a, this is the, you got to wait to see what you have um, and then try to move the pieces around and, you know, see where Leo, Theo, or uh, uh, Theo, Theo, right? Theo, I'm saying his name right. That <laughs> sounded wrong when I said it. Uh, where he fits in, where Malik fits in, there's different positions to play. There's five eligible players on every play and you try to use, you know, use those guys the best you can, but they got to come in here and prove it and, you know, earn the right to play. Yeah, I'd say some of these guys are older too, relative to you know, kind of 
what people have been through the last few years, I would say, with COVID and all those other things. So some guys are a little bit older, but uh, you know, he was a former receiver. He had a, a bunch of, you know, in terms of yards per carry, he's been pretty good. Um, you know, he's an athlete that played receiver and then played running back, has some good production. We'll, we'll throw him in the mix. And, you know, whether that's in a kickoff return game or whether that's at running back, whether it's a receiving part of it, um, you know, we got to do a good job of getting him here and, and seeing where he's at and then trying to fit him into the things that, you know, he can do well. Joe, how do you feel? This is sort of like the, the last major, you know, portion of the offseason where there's, usually there's major additions. So for the most mm -hmm. part, I assume you're probably not going to have much more to add. You put resources into the offensive line and free agency, a lot of them. You added Malik, you added Theo. How do you feel about the offense now? Yeah, I think, again, what Dave said earlier, once we get out on the field and see how the pieces work together, I think we'll, ha we'll, we'll have a better feel. He, Dave's is one of the better ones I've been around. Like, it's not his system. Like, we're, we're going to run this, and it's, you know, square pay. We've got round hole. Like, we're going to go out there. We're going to see what routes these guys run well, what they can do. There are some new pieces. Um, what do they do best? And then how can we, we, we accentuate that? How can we get them in positions where they can perform their best? So um, I like some of the pieces we have. I like some of the upgrades. Um, you know, again, you can throw Brian Burns in the draft, you know, as well. Just, you know, that pick 39 to, to bring on a 25-year-old two-time uh, pro bowler as a pass rusher as part of this draft class. So um, I like some of the moves that we made in the offseason. We, we still have work to do, and I just think it's year three, and we're just going to continue to building uh, the roster and the team. And I think where we are with some of the contract status, like I talked about last night, um, that you can keep a core group together, you know, over a two to three year window and you have another off season and another draft and then you know you look up and there's some really good pieces on the team. Are you, going, last one, are you guys going to add a quarterback in as an undrafted free agent? Do you intend to? Well, I, well I'd say is we'll have, you know, for, for rookie camp here in, in two weeks, Pat, we'll have a number of players come in. Um, you know, you, you need to bring in a, a quarterback to go ahead and to operate some seven on seven and things that you want to do. So, you know, we'll bring someone in, whether that's tryout, whatever it may be, and then we'll we'll go from there. Um, hey, could you say one quickie on the, the kid from UCLA? What did you see in him? Yeah, he's a good football player. Uh, he was actually with one, Gobi, our special teams coach. Uh, he, they, they crossed pass out at Hawaii. So, um, I mean, 440 career tackles, hasn't missed a game, smart, tough, dependable, instinctive. Um, our special teams coach, again, he's coached him, so, you know, has a vision for him on special teams. He was at the East-West, and I would say um, Tyrone Tracy was too. So having our coaches and then Shea at the Senior Bowl with Theo. So I think there is a little bit of a competitive advantage in terms of, uh, again, going back to Dave's staff and their ability or their willingness to sacrifice their time to help us in this process. And I would say all three of those guys that we took today, um, our coaches had intimate knowledge of those guys from, from the All-Star game. So uh, we're excited about Darius. He's a good football player. He's a good football player.